Hey, what's going on YouTube? This is Necrostevo and the Eterna City Enders are here in Season 6, Round 1 of the Playoffs. That's right, we managed to battle back through it all. Very, very interesting season. Overall, I definitely learned a lot about uh, not only my mindset when playing, but just a lot of these Pokemon I hadn't used really. But, Round 1, we are up against Skyrander and the Scandinavian Stoutlands. We did lose against him pretty terribly early on in this season of the LBA and that was one of my main goals in this game is to really show that I can battle against Skyrander and do my best because when I battled him before did not do my best at all uh, so that's part that's one part mindset and another part not over predicting at improper times during the battle so for this matchup we have a double dance Charizard X Enough speed to speed the Stoutland, uh, otherwise Tailwind, Swords Dance, Flare Blitz, and Earthquake to hit the Tyranitar. We also have Whimsicott with a hefty HP investment in order to take special hits a little bit better. Uh, and Sunny Day to hopefully break up some of that weather a little bit. Scarf Cobalion, just because I was hoping he would bring some type of setup, Caldeo, and then Scarf Cobalion can outspeed everything. I did go with Zen Headbutt over Stone Edge because I was really tired of missing Stone Edge in all these leagues. We also have a Dragon Dance for Alligator, nice and standard there. I did bring an Expert Belt Modest Porygon Z with adaptability, just because the coverage would allow me to smack everything on his team, barring Tyranitar, which I have several things for. And then finally, the Mambo Swine, Life Orb and Adamant with Stealth Rocks, uh, just to kind of clean up on the back end. And I figured he would bring some Sand Rush shenanigans this battle, which he actually brought both of his Sand Rushers. I didn't think he would bring both, I thought he would just bring one. Uh, Sky's team is pretty dynamically different from the first time that I battled him. Um, so it was interesting to prepare. Like, we didn't bring Pawniar this time, for example, because he didn't have Slow King. He no longer has Tentacruel, so it was it was interesting to prepare for some of those threats. Um, I really did think he would start off with either the Caesar, um, or maybe, maybe, I guess, something else. But he starts off with Tyranitar, which sucks. I needed to see if he would go for Stealth Rocks or to go right for the Stone Edge. He goes straight for Stone Edge, so that I was, in the back of my head, I was thinking he might be Scarfed. But, you know, that he probably also could have lived any hit that I would have gone for anyway, so Scarf wouldn't necessarily have made a bunch of sense there. I just went straight for Volt Switch, knowing that he wouldn't want to stay in to take a close combat from my Cobalion. He brings in Caesar, and I get some nice priority to go back into my Charizard to get off the Mega Evolution here. I figured that he would switch again, but I didn't know if he would go into his, um... Tyranitar, that seemed a little obvious, so I just decided to Mega Evolve and go straight for Flare Blitz, and since I'm Max Attack Adamant, even if he went on into Caldeo, it would do a fantastic amount of damage for it being a resisted hit, because that's a 2 hit KO, especially after the sand damage. Uh, I didn't know if Caldeo was the was the Scarfer that he would have here, I kind of needed to see the damage that he went for. I thought going into Whimsicott was too obvious, but I was also afraid of him going for Hydro Pump or Scald. And so I went into Whimsicott just to immediately eat a Hidden Power Poison, which just drops, pure, purely drops Fluff and Trouble there. I was really, really sad to see it go down that early in the battle. And if I had just stayed in, I could have killed the Caldeo. So um, that was a little bit risky on his part, but also Whimsicott was clearly my switch into Caldeo. Uh, unfortunately, I wasn't able to get any information off of that KO because Caldeo's H, uh, special attack is so high. So thinking and hoping that he was locked into the Hidden Power Poison, I went on to go Baleon. It looks like Close Combat might be a 2-hit KO on Sand Slash, but I was afraid to risk it in case he went for his Earthquake. And so I go out into my um, Feraligator thinking if he went for Earthquake, it wouldn't really hurt that much. Uh, and then I could of course threaten him back because the Sand isn't up. But since I'm in this position, it does allow me to Dragon Dance up, because I knew any hit that Caesar goes for, I can live it, even if he's max attack. Um, adamant I can live any hit here but he surprises me with superpower that actually does a good bit less than I expected it to it is a 2 hit KO unless he gets some attack drops uh, but it turns out he doesn't have any attack investment I went for waterfall there just because it was good neutral coverage against his team and he I do get a crit but that crit didn't matter because I was at plus one with life orb um, he goes into his Caldeo and I don't have any switch ins now that my Whimsicott is gone so I have to I'm forced to take that Secret Sword, unfortunately. Uh, but now I know I can take a single Secret Sword with my Charizard just because I have a little bit of HP and 
a single special defense point on, uh, I'm sorry, a single defensive point on Charizard. Uh, I was thinking he might switch into his Tyranitar here, but I knew even if I went for Flare Blitz and an Earthquake would clean it up if he was Scarfed, because he wouldn't be nearly as bulky. He goes for Super Power, which I would have lived, but he gets a critical hit, which sucks, because that, the best case scenario there, would have been me going for Earthquake after the Super Power, obviously KOing the Tyranitar because of the defense drop, and then living the uh, Sandstorm damage. But with the crit, now I'm down Charizard. He still has a very healthy Tyranitar, and I'm forced to go into Cobalion and use up another one of my precious Close Combats. Even with the PP Max, Close Combat only has eight uh, uses here, and I've already used up two of them. So, um, unfortunately, right here, I know that Stalin is faster than me after the Sand. Especially if he's Jolly, that's the only reason he would have brought it in. If he's Adamant, I actually might have outsped him with my Scarf. Uh, I have to bring in my Porygon here just because, at this point, everything that I have left is weak to fighting type coverage with Mamoswine, Cobalion, and Porygon. Uh, and based on him just taking out Porygon immediately, and no recoil at all, I'm going to say that he is probably banded. Uh, I figured that he would go on to Thunderous. And I have to just keep on clicking close combat here. I cannot risk going in into Mammoth Swine. I was hoping so hard that he would click Grass Knot. And he does. He stays in. He clicks Grass Knot. And even with the special defense drops, which I wasn't actually sure of this at the time, I'm able to take a Grass Knot from Thunderous. Now, there was a huge 50-50 at the end here if he was going to go for a Thunder Wave now. I really should have gone on into Mammoth Swine because if I, I was going to lose either way. And so Mammoth Swine was the correct ballsy play, because if he went for Thunder Wave, then we're back in there. But I, I was worried about him going for the, the Grass Knot a secondary time, so. That didn't quite work out, and now that I'm paralyzed, his Scarf Caldeo is going to outspeed both remaining members of my party. Cobalion did a fantastic job this battle, just threatening his entire team, even with the Sand Up. Uh, Mammoth Swine didn't really get a chance to do anything this whole match. There wasn't a, an apt opportunity to switch it in. But um, overall, even though we lost here in round one of the playoffs, I was much more pleased with how I played this battle than the first battle that I had against Skyrender. So thank you very much, Sky, for the battle. I thoroughly enjoyed it. And also thank you, Sky, for recording the battle right afterwards. I, I do like the crispy quality. It's just it's so nice. It's so appropriate for the playoffs there. Guys, please be sure to go check out Sky. He's been very, very gracious to give me high quality for a lot of these battles in the LBA. And since he beat me, obviously he's going to be the one who wins the whole season, right? So please go check him out so that way you can follow his exploits in the league. And in the meantime, I'll talk to you guys later. Bye now.